All right, welcome everyone. Welcome to the last Hurley Investments Market View commentary for March of 2027. <laughs> March 27, year 2023. I'm wishing it would be the last one, right? All right, um, let's see what we're doing. All right, we'll do tomorrow, Maude. Thank you for letting me know. Just uh, email me a time that works for you and what time zone you are in. All righty. Um, here we go. A couple weeks ago, I made the comment. And by the way, I know I've been taking an hour, hour and 15 minutes with you. Today, this will probably be one of the quick ones. This will be an easy 30, 35 minute -er. So a while ago, I was saying, hey, the Fed has got to back the $600 billion, right? No, they're only going to do 30. I mean, I, I was arguing with people. No, they've got to back it. No, they're only going to do 30. Come on, Kevin. <laughs> I knew it. So here's the total asset sheet. Look how much it's gone up here basically in March. And the short answer is, if we follow the link for tonight's commentary, I'm just going to show you the link right here, and here you go. We went up, and it's pretty simple to see. We went up from 8.3. All the way up to 7.3. So there is 400 billion dollars that we've gone up in the last two to three weeks. But the Fed's not going to bail us out. It's not going to cost taxpayer dollars. It's only the FDIC fund. That's it. Um, does anyone want to call BS or is it just me? Is it just me that's going to call BS here? Because I think we've got it figured out. And, well, Kevin, you've got to prove this. Well, I've been watching it. I've been going along. I mean, it's it's really, it's it's not hard to see, right? There it is. It's this is from T Row Price, I believe, is where Y Charts is pulling their their information from. It's right there, as clear as can be. And we thought it was only thirty billion that was going to come from some kind of, uh, I don't know, some kind of magical FDIC fund, all the banks are contributing into it, and they only need to raise the rates just a little to make up for it on $30 billion. I mean, let's face it, I call the BS cart the day that happened, and I just don't understand. I don't know. I don't understand where the belief system was at. So we are not going to have a tax increase. And the 30 billion came from the can't type from the FDIC banking insurance fund. I call BS. And we found where it's at. So Next question then is, what is it going to cost 
us. What is it going to cost us? And go ahead, everyone, you know, what do you think? I, I don't I don't have this answer down. It would be foolish for me to act like, oh, I've got it figured out. I know the answer. I don't. But what is it going to cost us? Perfect. I agree. Higher taxes. What else? Weaker dollar. Okay. Um, I, well, I can't say yes to that one, but I can't say no to that one either. I would probably agree it will, will definitely weaken our dollar. Ooh, I like that one. More inflation. I would think so. And out of curiosity, more inflation are going to equal what? What does more inflation equal? We're talking about the Fed here. Higher price is correct. I'm actually looking for something else, though. Related to the Fed, what does more inflation mean? Less demand to buy bonds? Ah, oh, got it. Higher interest rates. How many? Two or three more one quarter point or 25 basis point hikes. It's coming. It, 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 it's coming. There, there's no way it can't come is what I'm trying to say. There's no way that we can't have the basis rate point height go up. And we're probably going to find out this coming um, Thursday, Friday, Friday, PEC, PNC prices come up. But all I want to say is I told you so. It just took me three weeks to find out when or how it was happening. Let's face it, the fund, how they're bailing it out, they're just pushing the money out. It's It lines up perfectly. It's there. $400 billion already. Don't be surprised to see in a couple weeks if we're at $9 trillion where we completely bailed out the investors for... Uh, Silicon Valley Bank, the crypto bank in um, in New York, and shoring up the banks in general. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. And that's really, that's all I can say. I can't make it any more, I don't know. There's nothing else I can say because the numbers say it all. And because the numbers say it all, I'm just going to back off. With that said, looking at our markets, completely unpredictable. The Dow is going to gain the 200 back today. It will probably range in between the 33,199, which is the 50 day, and come down to the 32,355. Uh, Not a bad range. There's some movement. Might get a little bump, see a little sell off coming up shortly this week or next week for tax selling. Off we go. S&P even tighter. 50 day that we bounced off of four days in a row now sits at 4,014. We are struggling. Struggling mightily to hold the 4,000 level. 
I mean, super mightily. <laughs> what a tight range, too. 4,014 to 3,931. We've got a whopping 69, 79, 83 points to rotate in our tight range for the S&P 500. With no positive news coming up, there's no positive excitement that's coming up. Outlier, go NASDAQ. I kind of giggled because there's someone here tonight that let me know I'm not beating the NASDAQ this year. <laughs> um, you got to figure out what index you're going to hold me against. Last year, it was the S&P. The year before, it was the Dow. This year, it's the NASDAQ. I'm probably thinking the Wilshire will be the following year, and the small micro caps will be the year after, crypto the year after that, and then Dogecoin, right? Maybe Bitcoin. Who knows? The standard I'm held against and that uh, money managers are held against is the S&P 500. And that S&P 500 is what we're up against. I'm sorry there are other indexes that, uh, that might be doing better. But for those that have Baidu, um, Apple, Meta, you're, you're beating the S&P 500. We're probably not beating the NASDAQ, but you are definitely beating the S&P 500. And again, it's only March. All right. Um, what else did I want to mention here? I wanted to mention, oh, with that said, where will the... Market go. Out of curiosity, I want you to take a second. You just saw the S&P 500. I put in here every, making you guys sick, I know. I put in here a guesstimate every, every uh, week. That is not completely accurate. I need to uh, definitely take that out. but. Where is the S&P going to go in April? If you were to look and take a guess, where is the S&P going to go in April? What do you guys think? That 2% was for March. I need to make a guess too. Where would you guys say, well, sideways, but Bill, that doesn't count. You got to give me a number. Zero, Jim, zero. We're going to have no growth on the SP 500 for April. Zero. What do you guys think? Stewart said it's supposed to be a good month, but I doubt it. Yeah, I kind of doubt it too, Stuart. I don't really see the good month in there. Bill says down 1%. That's fair. I mean, basically what we're looking at is taxes, another interest rate hike, right? In that tight range. Russ thinks down 1%. You guys are all herd mentality. Come on. I kind of think the same, but I'm going to go with that pivot point, thinking around 39. You know, it probably will go up to 4,050, 4,000, maybe even 100, come back down. I just don't see a catalyst coming in the near future. So if I ran my numbers, as I ran my numbers, I came up with two and a half. 
The good news is with your two and a half, you can adjust it. You can adjust it as we come up to different times in the uh, in the month, right? Probably going to have some tax selling happening here in the near near future. Um, for who is this? It's not Y charts. It's uh, this is probably briefing.com right here. The collateral damage on a collective sense. <laughs> Boy, there's a lot of big words there, right? The collateral damage on a collective sense could be showing up soon enough to declining estimates. That will be particularly true for banks, but if the economy stumbles like many think it will because of the banking crisis, it will be true of most companies. What banking has yet to make its presence felt for the 12-month earnings estimate, but the banking crisis should be forcing a recalibration of earning models. We suggested mid-February that earnings estimates for the second half of 2023 would be at risk along with the economy. Admittedly, that view didn't envision a banking crisis being part of the equation but it is now. Sure, it might strike some as hopeful that market rates have come way down in the last few weeks and that the Fed's terminal rate might not stretch as high as previously feared only a week ago. Some might see that as a basis for multiple expansion. Probably not though. I mean, that would not be a multiple expansion reason to be honest with you. It's kind of funny how they say this. Basically, what they're saying is it's really hard to find a bottom for stock prices right now because nobody knows. Just nothing is making sense at the moment. And not only that, but nothing is making sense at all. There is nothing that's calculating or getting close to calculating real returns or expectations on the stock market at all. If you go to the market cap, uh, Y chart market recap, economic data set to be released next week will include March US consumer confidence, which should be down tomorrow, pending home sales on Wednesday, which should also be down tomorrow, the grow, Q4 gross domestic product on Thursday, which is the past, this is the last of the year of last year, and then the PCE, personal consumption expenditures, the PCE inflation. That last time was what sent the markets in a tailspin. If you were to look at this week and what I see, I don't see any positive news. There's no positive news on the horizon. And not only is there no positive news, the news that I am seeing is saying, hey, we might go for more inflation hikes. We might say that there is more trouble that's out there. Now, Bill Brander's making a comment here, and there's a pool of black swans swimming around out there. Doesn't that make you smile? So out of curiosity, and let's kind of give you guys a, a macro view. Where are the black swans at right now? There's a couple specific things that are our black swans. Stuart said China. Definitely China with the problems um, that it's had with Taiwan. China with trying to meet up with Russia and to have Middle Eastern oil um, traded in the yuan. Pretty interesting that you'll see there's a peace treaty between the Sunnis and the Shiites, which I think is Iran and um, the Emirates maybe. And basically it was brokered by China. 
So here we have China brokering a deal with, boy, to, to make it 100% accurate, brokering a deal with two sets of Muslims that have hated each other so that they can start to get their oil traded and their currency versus U.S. dollars. Um, even in South America, CCP is also mixing this in Central America. Yep, I agreed. More importantly, though, the weakness of the European banks. Black Swan, is Europe going to have some serious problems, which will definitely boil over to the United States and into, um, into our GDP as Europe has issues there? We have nuclear weapons in Belarus for the first time in, what, 30, 40 years with Russia moving nuclear weapons into Belarus. So, I mean, there are some black swans that are out there. It's not hard to miss the crap that's going on. Let's just put it that simple. It is not hard to miss the crap that's going on right now. And it's not getting better. Now, I hate being a doom and gloom guy. But let's face it, we've got some stuff happening. It doesn't look good. Not only that, but earnings probably won't look good next quarter. So you probably need to be defensive. If I'm going to answer the question, I know what you have. You probably need to be defensive for the next quarter. No two questions about it. All right. Um, found an interesting article, time to buy the tech. Hedge fund managers and others reveal their top picks. Again, the NASDAQ was up. You're looking at technology companies that don't need to borrow money. They're cash rich. A couple of you are wondering, well, Kevin, the beginning of the year, you said tech. Tech would be a good investment. Yes, tech should be a good investment because the inflationary pressures don't hit technology the same way that it hits uh, other S&P 500 companies. Please enjoy the read about technology. I agree with everything that's being said here. Short sellers are bidding on a serious money crash for 11 stocks. We're really going into short selling. One of them was, uh, was Square. Some of us own Square. Pretty amazing to have already deep in the money um, deep in the money puts in place, nothing like hardly losing anything. A couple hundred dollars on a hundred thousand dollars worth of square shares, love it. In fact, if I was looking for a trade, a leap long call on square would hands down be my play for a trade this week on Thursday. Uh, anyway, a couple short sellers here. Uh, they mentioned 11, Big Lots, Ugh. Big Lots, Dollar Tree, Dollar General. Those have higher than I would have expected short selling in them. Uh, Voya Financial is one. Block, obviously, is on the short seller's critical report list. Uh, Cinemark, obviously not doing good. GameStop, here is the list. It's it's scary. It's scary to think that really all of these companies could go out of business. Just keep that in mind. They might not hit a recessionary time period with higher interest rates because they'll never make it that far. Something to point out to some of you guys. I want uh, my three Verizon people to take notice. Warren Buffett finally throws in the towel on four lousy stocks. We never got into General Motive. We were out of U.S. Bank Corp. 
uh, store capital we've never been in, but Verizon, Verizon is looking more and more like a an AT and T, a good dividend paying stock. But the cash value of Verizon will probably just keep going down farther and farther and farther. It's not looking good for Verizon. If we pull Verizon out to a chart, um, we're going to go weekly. 57 down to 38. And it probably, in all honesty, if we really pull this chart out in time, um, it will probably head down to 25. Verizon. Pull it out to two and a half years. Sideways for two years, down to 34. One day, obviously went through a fund, backing up 32. Don't be surprised if it touches 25. If you want to wait for it to come back, you can. Email me though. Um, Verizon might be a play that we're looking to get out of unless you want to stay in it for another three to four years. Just something to keep in mind. Um, I do like the lot they finish up though. Plenty of S&P 500 dogs to, to get into. Opportunities that you could be uh, looking at that would replace some of these uh, these ones that you see Buffett getting out of. Uh, beware of these debt-heavy stocks in your portfolios, borrowing costs rise. I'm just going to show you the list. Carvana, going to go out of business. It's an unsustainable business. Duke Energy, I didn't realize um, how much Duke Energy has been in in uh how do I say it? I didn't realize how far they've overextended themselves in an industry that you can't do it. I don't think Duke Energy is going out of business, but they're not going to be making money like they used to. Ford net debt to equity 211%. <laughs> Not all debt is equal. Ford is selling their cars and making money on that and financing their cars and making money on that. They're going to be okay and in great shape. Open door technology, 317. Not all debt is equal. They're a tech company. They spent a lot of money. They're going to be okay. Woof. Stupid business model. Stupid idea. It's going to go out of business. Walgreens Boot Alliance, 115.20% net debt to equity. Not all debt is equal. They bought up competitors. It's a very interesting article, but it is definitely slanted towards being smarter than he thinks he is. And last but not least, I put in here, I talked to 70 parents who raised highly accomplished adults. Here are five signs your kids will be successful. They are persistent. They are curious. They have passion. They are self-starters. They are risk takers. A couple of you asked, why do you always kind of throw a kid or a do-good or a self-improvement in there? Well, I don't know if you guys are perfect with your children, but I'm not. And so I look for those things, one, that will help me be a better business owner, two, that will help me better read or understand the market, and three, that will help make me be a better, better, blah, 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 I can't speak, a better parent. 
And as I find those things, I try to give those out to you guys as well, just as something that you can uh, enjoy and spend some time with that, uh, that hopefully could make you a better person as well. Any questions? I'm basically done. I told you it was going to be a quick one. Any questions you guys have for me today that I can answer for you? I know we've gone through a bunch of these where it's like, Kevin, you've been on the, you know, for an hour, hour and a half, but looking through, it's kind of a smaller group tonight. Any questions you guys would like to ask me that I can get an answer for you particularly? Uh, William, it's kind of funny that you just typed it in. Would you be getting out of Verizon and shifting over to T-Mobile? T-Mobile is significantly more expensive than Verizon. Like, four times as expensive. Uh, if you had 1,200 shares, yes. I would be looking to shift you from Verizon over to T-Mobile. If you have 800 shares or less, you're right on that bubble that, depending on the cash value of your portfolio, would make the decision if we would at least jump into 300 shares of T-Mobile. So that would be the my thought process. But yes, uh, I would be looking to exit a Verizon strategy. It probably is one of those that if you're okay picking up shares for the next two to three years to make a four or 500% down the road, we could stay in it. If you're looking for something quicker than that, Verizon will not be the stock for you. So good question uh, there, William, and hopefully that answers it. But there are a couple of you that have Verizon here. So I, I do want to talk with you tonight, but I'm busy getting accounts over. Please email me and uh, we'll talk about it most likely tomorrow would be the best for that. But uh, good question. I hope that that answers your question. Yes, I would be getting out of Verizon period, but to shift it over to T-Mobile, 1,200 shares is really where you want to be to go from 1,200 shares of Verizon to 400 shares of T-Mobile. If you have less than 800, we're spending money, and so it will be a question of how much capital you have and if you feel it might be worth purchasing in the telecommunications industry, which obviously if we're in Apple, you already have that, so maybe you don't want to double up on a telecommunications type of stock. Anything else for you guys? <laughs> so, yes, William, you've made some great money, especially last year with uh, puts. We also made some great money on puts this year on Verizon. We took it off recently, I believe, to see it bounce back, or we might have a little bit of an on still. Um, I'm not exactly sure, but if you took the loss on Verizon, that would count towards profits going into the future. And we've already been taxed on the gains last year, or we'll have some gains at the beginning of this year. I, I really would have to look at your account to answer exactly what that would be for you. Probably this is not the, uh, the arena to do that in. Okay, I don't see other, uh, do not see any other uh, questions coming in. Maude, text me a time. Tomorrow afternoon, I am busy. Got to go down to the state. Uh, interesting conversation to be had on what they think I want to do with Schwab or do to Schwab or disclosures or complaints. But uh, send me a time that we might be able to work on something tomorrow um jim you probably have verizon send me an email and we'll make sure i go over that same with you william and mary i'm pretty sure you're the third so for you three let's go sure let's go through accounts and we'll find out what our next step will be for verizon all right guys hey have a good one appreciate you being here tonight i'll get this up uh, most likely sometime later tonight 
and uh, you'll be able to read it tomorrow morning. Have a wonderful evening. My Hurley Investment, singular there, myhurleyinvestment.com. And for those of you that are looking for a trade, I strongly might recommend a leap long call on Verizon. Leap long call on Square. Get out before earnings because it's uncertainty. Get back in and follow the trend from there. We're going to go over this on Thursday. You guys take care. Have a good one, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.